Hi there, it's Chris and Marilyn, directors of the National House of Prayer. We are sitting outside of the, of the building that houses the Quebec House of Prayer. So some of you may know that we're on a bit of a tour of Quebec and the Maritimes. It's not just a tour, it's for vacation. We're actually on a prayer tour and we're meeting with prayer leaders, houses of prayer, uh, Christian leaders and pastors and leaders of denominations to talk about prayer in their, in their regions and in their writings. And so a part of this is we're going to be stopping here. We also want to pray in each of the capital provinces. So Quebec City, Fredericton, Charlottetown, and Halifax. And this is our first stop. I'm going to give you a little history about this building that they're using for the Quebec House of Prayer. It was originally built by a Reverend Doolittle back in 1837 um, as a boys' school. Over the years, it has changed hands, and before the Quebec House of Prayer bought it, it was a bar, and it was a hotel that where you could rent rooms by the hour. It was used for sex trafficking, and the walls apparently had black uh, wallpaper on it. So, and, and then the Quebec House of Prayer took it over, they renovated, and um, it, it is such a great picture of the redemption. This building is such a great picture of God's redemption. This is what we wanted to point out. It's such a contrast in, in how Quebec, you know, when we pray for Quebec, we knew that it had, in the beginning, it had a godly foundation. The church was involved in its, in its founding as a region. And then from there, it moved away to an ap apostol uh, to a way to godliness, away from the church and from God to a place of darkness. But we see this as a picture of what God can do. When we look at the Quebec House of Prayer, we see this foundation where Reverend Doolittle came in, planted the work. The work actually grew into a university that's called Bishop's University, where at one time it was a theological training center. And today it's just a regular university. But we see how, how it turned from that place, that godly foundation, fallen away, went to the deepest and darkest of places, and now through the redeeming process, not that we redeem buildings, but it's a pr prophetic picture of redemption, where it was started off and now today it's a place where we raise up prayer leaders, where we raise up prayer and intercession for the, for the province, and uh, it is a place that leaders can come and you can come to spend time, to spend time in prayer. They even have a hotel here that you can stay for a few days. And so we've been here for a couple of days now, but I wanna encourage you that to pray for Quebec from its foundations to where it is now. And so let's pray. So Father, we pray for this province. Lord, we know the foundation. Lord, we know the word that's been preached here. Lord, we know all your plans and purposes that you have laid up. And Lord, this is one of the few places on the planet with less than 1% pro professing Christians in this province. Lord, we say, awaken the church here. Lord, bring us from awakening, Lord, to bring revival. God, from revival, bring harvest. And from harvest, God, bring transformation. We pray this over the province of Quebec. Yes. yes, and Lord, I pray that you would bring them to the place where the truth of your word becomes real in their hearts. Mm -hmm. That, Lord, the, 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 the work of the cross will become something real to them. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, thank you, for joining, thank you for joining us, everyone. We will update you. We are heading off to Fredericton tomorrow. We do a prayer walk. So uh, God bless you. We'll see you next time. This is Chris and Marilyn, directors of the National House of Prayer. Bye, Bye. for now.